Now then guys, how are you doing? Welcome back and thank you for joining me on another rebuild. But this one's a little bit different than the other ones. We take FC20, a team that haven't won the Eredivisie since 2010. And it's the only time they've ever won it as well. You know, trying to dethrone the likes of Ajax, PSV and Feyenoord is going to be absolutely massive. Now, if you're here to watch me win the Champions League in five seasons, that's not going to happen. So, you know, realistically, it'd be nice if you got into the Champions League at all, if I'm completely honest. But the plan for this one is to win the league again. You know, we'd want some domestic cups as well, some domestic trophies at least. But the league is the main objective. So that's the plan for the day's rebuild. But before we move on, I just want to say, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It means a lot as this channel continues to grow. And if you're a regular subscriber that checks out the majority of my videos, thank you very much for your support. It means a lot. But let's move on. Let's get into the FC20 rebuild. And let's see if we can survive the first season. So here we go then guys, FC20, he's a completely different proposition as the majority of the rebuilds that I take on are teams that have got the ability to win the league. Yeah, Aston Villa was one of those mediocre ones, but the other ones we really could have pushed on with. Now, as with every rebuild, I've got five years to sort this team out to get them winning some kind of trophies, if it be a domestic cup or the league. Europe, obviously, would be fantastic, but I don't think that's going to happen in this save. But we skipped forward 12 months, and now we're at the end of the 2021 season. So we're starting this season as we are now, and they've just finished in 12th place. And their form has been absolutely shocking. So when we have a look at the past positions, yeah, they've been poor. They ended up finishing in 12th place, and they were sat in 12th place from weekday 20. It's not been good for them. Obviously, the escape relegation, that would have been a bit of a shambles if I was taken over them, and they've just been relegated. But yeah, we've got a lot to do with them. When we look at the finances, 2.9 million in the transfer budget and a current wage budget of 42k per week. Absolutely shocking. We're only getting 55% of the transfer revenue as well. And we're only 2k under the wage budget. We've got 23 million pounds in the overall balance. So financially, we're not in that bad of a place. Normally, I spend loads of time looking at the income and the expenditure. But with such a low amount of wage budget and transfer budget to play with, I don't really think that matters. I'm not going to be able to bankrupt the club, let's put it that way. Because it's just not going to allow me. I'm not going to be able to do much. You know, my scouting budget is basically just going to be Holland. I'm not going to be able to get a worldwide scouting network set up yet. So the big thing for us is obviously to just push on in the league and try and get a better bit of revenue there. That is really it. Looking at the competitions that we could take and part in them, we've got the Eredivisie and the Dutch Cup. So that is it. So I've got two cups to compete for. That is it. Until we get into Europe. That is the plan. Can you imagine if we didn't get into Europe? As far as it goes, the top four teams are going into Europe. So we've got a break into the top four. And when we're looking at the teams that are currently in the league, so when we look here, we've got Ajax, Feyenoord, PSV, AZ Alkmaar. Yeah, there's plenty of better teams than us in there. And like I say, we finished 12th in the league. 14 draws, so if you can turn some of those draws into wins. But we finished on 38 points and PSV finished on 63. So there's a hell of a gap already. When we look at the squad dynamics, team cohesion is good, club atmosphere is average, and managerial support is very good. So that's, I suppose that's a bonus. They're happy for me to be there. Top influencers wise, anybody opposes? No, nobody opposes my appointment. I've got 14 players of supporters and nine players that have no real opinion of us. So again, not too bad. Looking at the squad depth then, we're probably going to play like the 4-3-1-2 or, you know, with an attacking midfielder or defensively playing with an anchor. We're definitely playing with the three in midfield regardless. If they're wide or if I'm playing three in the middle, not quite sure yet. So striker-wise then, we've got loads of players on loan by the look of it. Cerny on loan from Utrecht. He's our best striker, so we've got to work out there. Menning is our best striker. It's actually at the club, 25-year-old. He's not great, is he? Let's be honest. Behind the strikers, again, Cerny's up there. Luca Illich on loan from Manchester City is our best attacker midfielder. And again, you know, here we go. We've got someone who actually belongs at the club, Romato. So he is 21-year-old and he's got plenty about him in fairness. Current ability 3.5 star, potential ability 5 star. So he could do a job for us in the centre of midfield. Looking at the back four, it's not too bad, but Kick Pieri is the best player at the club, and he's on loan from Ajax. He's a good player, though. So we might have to look at loans this season, as obviously financially we're not in a very good place. And then in goal, we've got Drommel. Now, Drommel is a good goalkeeper. He's not been fully capped by Holland, and that surprises us that he's not had that opportunity. Current ability, four-star. Potential ability, four-and-a-half-star. He may be with us for the entirety of the save, I think. He's only 24-year-old, and he can definitely improve. 
So when we look at the previous winners then, 2009-2010 season was the season that they won it. They've never been anywhere near again. Obviously the season after, they were in second place. And then in 2013-2014, they were in third place. But then they have just disappeared. So when we look at the club vision, they want me to develop players using the club's youth system. We can do that. Play entertainer football, of course, that's the way we play. Work within the wage budget, we'll do that. And they want a mid-table finish by the end of next season. Fantastic. We'll, we'll go for a mid-table finish. Then they just want us to try and work towards being top half of the table. I'll take that all day long. So when we're looking at development centre then, we have got some decent players in there. Let's have a look at the potential. So Max Burns apparently is the best player in my youth development system. He's okay. Central midfielder. 18 year old. Two and a half star ability. Three and a half star potential. You know, so we may have to look at obviously pushing some of these players through as well to bulk out the squad. Because as I say, a lot of the squad is loans. So who's the best player at the club then? Kick Pieri, like I say, he's the best player at the club. And he's okay. This is the thing, you know, he's the best player at the club and he's distinctively average. Who are we paying the most to? 5.5k per week to Tyrone Ebue. He's on loan again. He's come from Benfica. He's not that good. So we've got problems. But I'm expecting a team that's going to challenge Ajax from day one. No. So that's what we need to do is we need to build on that. And then finally, we're just looking at the club info. The Grosch Vesta is the stadium. Built in 1998, got a 30,000 capacity and it's in good condition. What about the rest of the facilities? We've got great training facilities and good youth facilities. So we've got enough about us to do stuff there. So right then, guys, that's a little bit of an introduction to the team. What we've got to do now then is get busy in the summer transfer window and we'll come back at the start of season one. And fingers crossed we haven't financially crippled the club. Right then, guys, so we're on the first game of the first season win charge. And yeah, we've brought in Cristiano Ronaldo, so let's have a look. Only joking, we've brought in Andy Carroll. Now, yeah, definite uh, similarities between those players, obviously. Yeah, we've brought in the old glass back. Now, I'm hoping we get no injuries. He's a fringe player that maybe passed his best. There's a little bit of an uproar when I brought a 32-year-old in. He, like I say, has got historic injury problems. However, the way I'm going to play is I'm going to play with like a deep line forward as one of my front two, and he's the man that can do that. He's got good heading, decent strength. He's very good on the bravery. He's aggressive. Hopefully, we get no red cards out of him. We're down to 10 men, but I thought we'd bring Andy Carroll in. He's only got 12 months with us. He has got a contract extension if he plays 15 games. That is likely to happen. However, that's just another 12 months. But yeah, Andy Carroll was the first player through the door. But we've only had one player leave, and that's Giz Smal. Now, he left for £1 million. It was 825k with add-ons, like I say, adding up to £1 million. He's gone off to Emmon, so I'll take that. A £1 million. He only played four games last season under the previous manager. So, for me, that's a good deal. We've brought plenty of players in. We've brought in Aladou Sedou. Now, three-star current ability, potential five-star player. From the Ivory Coast, 21-year-old, regular starter who could improve. He's playing as a full-back, can play both left and right-back, predominantly right-back. Very good all-rounded player already. 21-year-old, valued at 1.6 million, and we got him on a free transfer. We haven't actually spent any money this transfer window. Every transfer we've brought in has been a free one, and he played 32 games last season in the French Second League. We brought in Eric Schouten. Now, this guy is a regular starter in his prime years. He's just going to be a squad player. He's probably not going to be a start. You know, when you look, he's heading, mark and tackling all 12. He's not got the best strength. He's playing to his full potential at three stars. 29-year-old, like I say, 1.9 million. We're paying him nothing at 1.9k per week. He has got a couple of years with us, but again, we got him on a free transfer. He played in the league below last season, 30 games there, two goals, one assist, and three player to match performances. So, you know, like I say, just a squad player. We then brought in Sebastian Holman, 29-year-old, fully capped Swedish international, capped four times by them, currently playing to his full potential, valued at 2.1 million, another player that's in his prime years, and you'll have noticed I've done a lot of that, as I want to try and consolidate this season, you know, really try and push on, get into that top half, and then just build a little bit of revenue up from there. I have struggled this transfer window because we haven't got the reputation in trying to get some of the better players, you know, considerably better players for our squad and our club was hard bloody work. So he played in the Eredivisie last season with Willem, 30 games for them. Yeah, solid starter for us. We then brought in Rhys Devine from Manchester United on a free transfer. He's 19 year old, current ability two and a half star, potential ability four and a half star. This guy's a quality player. I had him in my heart save, my let's play save, and he's very good. Over the five year period, if he stays with us, he'll develop really nicely. He's probably a better left midfielder and he's a left back but we've got somebody who can play in both of those positions like i say got him on a free transfer from manchester united and this guy as long as he develops the way i would like him to will be a quality player 
We then brought in a Zimbabwean Admiral Musque. So 10 caps, 5 goals at international level. 22 year old, valued at 2 million, 2.5k a week. And his current ability is three star. His potential ability four star, so he's not a million miles away. Finishing and composure decent. Acceleration and pace also very high. So he's got a bit about him. He's a free transfer. We got him from Leicester, but he was out on loan at Wickham last season. 37 games, six goals. Isn't the greatest goals to games ratio. However, I think he'll do well in this league. And then we brought in another elder statesman in Job. A 33-year-old Angolian with 72 caps. Current ability three and a half star is obviously playing to his full potential. He's not going to develop any further now. He's just a decent all-rounded player for what we're after. Got a bit of flair about him and determination. His age is still good anyway. He can play out both on the left and right side of midfield. And should I drop, want to drop a player higher, he can do that as well. Free transfer. He was playing in Angola last season. 30 games, 4 goals, 9 assists and 2 player to match performances. An average 7.76 rating. And like I say, he's only got one season with us, but if he contributes nicely to the success of the team, then yeah, he's the right person to have. And then when we look at the finances, then we've got £7.4 million in the transfer budget, 65k wage budget now, with 5k under that at 60k per week, and our overall balance is £32 million. So we're not in a bad place at all. Dynamics boys, we've got one player that wants to leave. I'm trying to get him shipped out, but the offers for him have been shocking. If I get another offer in at a similar level, I will probably just let him go. Team cohesion is good. Club atmosphere is average and my geo support is good. Let's see how many players don't support us. So I've got 11 players to support us, 12 players that have no real opinion, but I've got no team leaders as it stands. Squad depth wise then, you know, I haven't got any real standouts. You'll notice I've got nobody on loan neither. So you've got Musqui, Menning, Job and Andy Carroll as my top four strikers. Andy Carroll, the fourth best striker at the club. You know, in the midfield, we've got basically right across the midfield, our best player is Romato. All rounded, not bad. We've just extended his contract. He's going to be with us basically till the end of the save now. Romato is the best defensive midfielder as well. So we are going to play with our anchor man this time round. Out on the left hand side. Osterwald is my best left back. And on the right hand side, Pleguazulo, if that's how you pronounce his name, as that is a mouthful, but he's my best right back. In the centre defence, then we've got Dummick, who's my best centre back, 29 year old Bosnian Herzegovinian, five caps, one goal. So we have got some full internationals in the team now, and obviously the best goalkeeper of the club is Drommel. So for me, I think we're set up quite nicely there. When we look at the season preview, then. We're expected to finish 12th in the league, so not even get a top half finish this season. We're 200 to 1 to win the league. And then the media dream 11 is basically Ajax and PSV. So we haven't got anybody in there at all, which, you know, doesn't surprise me at all. So looking at the team selection wise, then we're probably going to go like this. We're playing a tick attacker on a positive mentality. We're playing a 4 1 3 2. We're going to play quite defensively to start with. We are playing positively, but I want a defensive stance amongst the team. So we've got Drummel in goal. Luoki, Oosterwald, Holman and Plezigwello, that name, out at right back. Romato in that holding role with Devine, Delange and Job out wide with Musque and Carroll up front. So that's the way we're going to play. We may need to have pushed these players a bit higher, who knows. We'll see how this season goes. So what we're going to do then, guys, is we're going to try and consolidate this season. I'm not expecting any silverware. It'd be an absolute miracle if we got into the European places. But we want a top half finish, build the reputation and we go again next season. So yes, let's simulate season one and see how we get on. Right then guys, so we're back at the end of season one and the aim was a top half finish and we've hit a sixth place finish. Gotta be happy with that. Now the one thing that I have noticed, and this will teach me for not having a look at the rules before we start playing, is that seventh to fourth place do like a Europa League playoff place. And we actually got to the final against AZ Alkmaar and we lost 2-0 on aggregate. So there was an opportunity actually for us to get into Europe. Now when we have a look at those rules... 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th place all fight for that Europa League 2 place or the Europa Conference League place. So we had an opportunity there, a real big opportunity to, to end up in Europe in our first season. We just missed out as we end up finishing in 6th place on 59 points, the same as AZ and 13 points clear of FCM. And so we had a fantastic season, an absolutely incredible season in fairness. I thought we'd have been like around the 10th, 9th area. So to get into 6th place and to be so far clear, don't get me wrong, there's still a massive gap between us and Ajax. Ajax obviously dominating the league on 84 points but that's a fantastic start to our first season. When we look at the past positions not the greatest start to the season as we ended up second from bottom 17th place after four games but then yet yeah, we leveled off between 6th and 7th and towards the back end of the season we were as high as 5th until the last game of the season that we lost 2-1 to AZ who overtook us and we ended up in 6th place but I'm happy with that. I think that's a very good first season in charge. 
Finances wise then, as a transfer budget goes, we've still got 55% of transfer revenue, but we're on 8.3 million. We're potentially committed to spending 67, but we're okay at the minute. And overall balance is 29 million. Naturally, there was a decline there as we started off the season on 31. But that'll obviously be without going to an expenditure, so I'm not overly worried about that. We're still in the black, and that's the main thing. Squad dynamics-wise, team cohesion is very good. Club atmosphere is excellent. Amagio support is very good. Asking to leave his stomach, he wants to start new more games. And Tim and Delange wants to go for better playing time. We'll look at that in the summer. And then dynamics-wise, I've got two team leaders now, Drommel and players Aguero. Both club captain and vice captain there, so that's good. And I've got 10 players that have no real opinion of us. Competitions wise then we know that we finished in 6th place and in the Dutch Cup we were knocked out in the 3rd round by Ajax. Job scored 5 goals though, that's not bad going to get to round 3. When we look at the player stats then, Job was our top goal scorer with 12 goals so you could say that he did a job. Anyway, he also had the highest average rate at 7.42, he had the most assists at 15, he had the most red cards at 2 and he had the most player match awards at 8. But best pass completion was Holman at a 95%. And most yellow cards was Lockwee and Holman with 12 each. Team stats wise then, we scored 61 goals which is the 5th best. Goals conceded 50 which is the 7th best, that is poor. Yellow cards wise we got 77 which was the worst and we got 2 red cards which is the worst. So we definitely need to work on discipline. So what we're going to do then now again guys, is we're going to move forward to the second season. I'm going to build hard in the transfer window. I may have to spend a little bit of money here however... I will be selling some of these free players on that we got last season. So yes, join me at the start of season two. Well, hopefully we've added depth and quality. Right then, guys. So we're back at the start of season two. And we've done some decent business. We've actually spent some money this time around. We've had some decent outgoings as well. No major transfers, but the cash flow has been steady. And when we look at the finances, we've got 2.3 million in a transfer budget. We're still only getting 55% of any revenue that's made. And wage budget is 91k, which is 4k under the current wage budget. We've got 28 million in the overall balance. And profit and loss for this month is minus 17k. But this season, we're already 727k in the black. So as far as the outgoings go then, Max Bruns has gone. Now he was apparently the best youth prospect at the club and we've let him go. We let him go for 300k. He played eight times since last season, one goal of 6.78. With the options that I've brought in, I would have thought that he was going to get forgotten about, so we let him go. We then let Daniel Semiuko, his player that joined us last season, currently valued at 275k. Now he had potential ability 5 star. His head and mark and tackling was good for a centre back, 20 year old Cameroonian. He went to PSV for 400k and we got a player part exchange in that as well. And the last player to leave was Dario Dumic. Now he was very unhappy with the quality contract that he was offered. And when an offer came in for him from Venlo then, yeah, he took it 425k. I'll take that. He only played 4 games for his last season anyway. So nearly half a million pound isn't bad at all. So coming in then, we brought in Danilo Pereira. Now this guy was on loan with us the season before I took over. He only scored 7 goals in 33 games. He was at Ajax's second team last season where he scored 14 goals in 13 appearances. And he was back on a free transfer, so we got him. Not a bad player at all. Current ability 2.5 star, potential ability 4.5 star. 23-year-old Brazilian. Currently paying him 1.2k a week, which is good. And he's valued at 2.1 million. The next player in then was John Karakaburu. Now this guy, I've had him in one of my other saves. I genuinely can't remember what team it was. It may have been in the Roma save. And he was obviously we were further on down the line. And he developed into a really good player. So I got him in. He cost us next to nothing, 170k. He played 22 times for Real Sociedad's second team last season, scored 8 goals, a 7.06 rating. And the season before that, he was in their C team and scored 14 goals. And for me, like I say, he's a player that I've had before and he's a player that could develop. Now, he's currently valued at 650k, 19-year-old Spaniard. Acceleration, pace, ball 14. Now, dribbling, finishing and first touch is good. Could work on the composure a bit, but overall, his stats are decent in the right areas. We then spent 750k on Philip Jagiello. Now, he's currently 3-star, potential ability 4.5-star. 24-year-old, fully capped Polish international with two caps for them already. Decent all-round player that can play in the centre of the midfield. The thing is, we haven't got any real standout players coming in. You know, the players that we're getting are all all-rounded. Mentally decent, physically good. Value 2.4 million, like I say. And we got him for 750k from Genoa. He played in the Serie A last season, 13 games. Average rating-wise, a 6.5. But I think he'll fit into our setup quite nicely. Another player in was Abdallah Al Mohamed. So he's from Comoros, a nation that I've never even heard of, but he's been capped 20 times by them anyway. 23 year old, valued at £1 million. Current ability 2 star, potential ability 4 star. Can play out on that right hand side, very strong on the right foot anyway. And we got him from Marseille's second team on a free transfer where he played 22 games last season. 
And then finally then, this was our big money signing of this season. So we brought in Dimo Krastev. Now this is a player that I had in my Frontina save and he's an absolute world beater. Defensive midfielder as he stands, 19 year old, 12 caps by Bulgaria, 2 goals already, so he's already fully capped. Current ability, 3.5 star, potential ability, 5 star. He's going to play in that anchorman role, but can play in the central midfield as well. We bought him for 4.2 million. There are add ons in there as well. He could be 4.8 with games played, but he didn't play a game last season. He's played one game in the Serie A. But for me, I know how this guy can develop, and he's going to be a starter, so he's only going to get better. So when we look at dynamics and the team cohesion is good, the club atmosphere is very good and the managerial support is very good. I've got no unhappy players at the minute. And as far as team leaders go, I've still got Drommel and Plezaguelo. And 16 player supporters, 8 players have no real opinion of us. And more importantly, nobody opposes us. And then looking at the squad from a tactical perspective, we are still going to play with our anchorman. So it'll be Drommel in goal, Ustawalde, Plezaguelo, Holman and Ali Mohamed at the back. With Krasteb in that holding role. Lukey and Job out wide. Job is still with us. He's basically getting paid on a weekly contract now. Jagiello in the centre of the midfield with Karakaburu and Daniela Pereira up front. And from the season preview then, we're expected a 13th place finish. They've got no hope for us at the minute, have they really? Let's be honest. And we've got no players in the Media Dream 11, which is to be expected. So we're 250 to 1 now to win the league. So with that in mind, and I think we've strengthened really well this season, I think, you know, we've now got to be pushing on for at least that top seven place so then we can get into those European playoff places and then hopefully win that, get through, and then next season have some kind of European football. Even if it's the Europa Conference League, I will take that because it's going to enhance our reputation and we're going to have an increased revenue because of it. So there we go then, guys. We're going to simulate forward for the second season and fingers crossed we're in Europe at the end of it. So here we go then guys, we're back at the end of season two and we're in third spot, absolutely massive. As when we look at the league table, yes, we have got Europa League too, I'll take that regardless. You know, bizarrely we didn't end up in that Europa League place, which is, ah, I'm not even bothered. Yes, there may be a bit of increased revenue there, but who knows, we might win the Europa Conference League, you never, you never know. As we finished in third place, 34 games played, 20 wins, 6 draws, 3 losses, 60 goals scored, 37 conceded, goal difference of plus 23, and 66 points on the ball. We finished 7 points clear of Ezad Alkamar and 18 points behind Ajax. So it's still quite a big gap between us and Ajax anyway. But at the end of season two, we've got European football. So we're moving on a good steady incline for me. We're really pushing forward. You know, this season coming, if we can get some quality players in because we've got European football. Whilst it's not the Champions League, it's still European football nonetheless. So yeah, that should put us in a better place. Pass positions wise then, it was a bit mixed up until game day 18 where we beat Venlo 3-2 and then yeah we basically cruised along, we were sat in 3rd place from match day 24 so I'm happy with how that went, 3rd place finish is absolutely massive. Finances wise then, we're sat with £21 million in the bank, we've got £7 million in the transfer budget, we've now got 75% of transfer revenue being made available. And wage budget is 181k. That's absolutely massive. What an increase that is. And we're currently spending 95k, so I'm very happy with that. Squad dynamics wise, then, team cohesion is very good. Club atmosphere is good, and magical support is very good. I've got nobody that has any issues. And as far as top influencers goes, I've got 19 players of supporters, five players that have no real opinion, and nobody opposes. Winner, winner. Finally then, looking at the player stats, Daniela Pereira and John Karakaburu were both top goal scorers with 13 goals each, so that's not bad from both my front men. Ali Mohamed had the highest average rating at 7.15. Lukoki had the highest average ratings with 9. Sebastian Holman had the best pass completion with 95%. Most player of the match awards, 3 players there. Holman, Ali Mohamed and Krastev with 3 apiece. Most yellow cards was Lukoki with 12 and most red cards was Holman with 1. Team stats wise then, we scored 60 goals which was the 3rd best, we conceded 37 which is the 4th best, so goals conceded much better now. 8 hit yellow cards which was, which was the worst amongst the 18 teams in the league, 1 red card which was the 7th worst as well. So overall a very good season, yes financially we've took a little bit of a hit but that's a natural dip as the season goes along. But I'm looking forward to this summer's rebuild as we try to get some quality players in for our European push next season. Right, so we're back for the start of season three then. And we spent some money, we've spent some money again. Not massive money. We've currently made a loss this month of 414k. We've still got 4.5 million in the transfer budget. We're spending under 30k in the wage budget. We've got 22 million still left in the overall balance, so we're not in a bad place. Transfers wise then, Eric Shouten left on a free transfer, we just decided not to extend his contract so we went on a free transfer to Sparta, played 13 games for us last season, 
got a 6.97 rating, but at 31 year old, I brought him in to be a depth option in my first season, so yeah, it was time for him to go. So replacing him then, we brought in Benedict Gimber, 26 year old German, currently valued £4 million and we're paying him 8.25k. Now for me, he's probably the best player at the club, attributes wise anyway, mentally, physically, technically, he's decent, head and mark and tackling and strength, all good. Strength could be a little bit better at 13 at the minute, you want it, plus 15, but current ability, three and a half stand, he's playing to his full potential. We spent £2.3 million on him from FC Colne. He played two games last season, got a 6.5 rating. So he doesn't come to us banging form, let's put it that way. And he's not been a regular starter. But overall, I'm happy with that sign. And 2.3 million, maybe on the high end of what we should have paid. But like I say, in my opinion, he comes to us currently the best player at the club. We then brought in Johannes Dorfler, another German, currently 26-year-old. Current ability three star, potential ability three and a half star. So he's not a million miles away. Can play all across the right-hand side. So for me, he's either going to play a right-back or right midfield naturally. We spent 950k on him and I'm happy with that. We got him from Panderborn in the German second league. 33 games from last season, 6 goals, 1 assist, 4 player to match performances. He's not the finished article yet, even at 26. Acceleration is good. Pace, a little bit lower at 13. Crossing and dribbling decent. It'll be interesting to see what he delivers this season. And then lastly, we brought in Derek Kutiza, who can play out on the left-hand side. So again, crossing and dribbling decent, acceleration and pace is there. Current ability three-star, potential ability four-star, 25-year-old, being capped at under-21 level by Switzerland. Currently valued 3.4 million, and we spent 1.2 million on him. Now, he played for St. Gallen in the Swiss Super League last season. 13 games, one goal, one assist. And I've strengthened on both my wide areas. His job has now left, you know, and he has been decent for us in a couple of seasons, especially that first season he was with us. So dynamics-wise then, team cohesion is good, club atmosphere is very good, and managerial support is very good. Now, Giulio Pleguizilo, if that's how you pronounce his name, I'd, I wish this guy would just... Play well for the club, but I didn't have to speak about him. But unfortunately, I've stripped him of the captaincy. Got better options out there. Now, you know, his leadership was 15, but we have got better options. And he's not happy about it. His contract also expires at the end of this season. I maybe should have extended his contract before I stripped him of the captaincy. But yes, he's not happy. And top influencers wise then... Both my team leaders still support us, even though one of them is publicly unhappy with us. 13 players that have no real opinion of us and no players that oppose us. So looking at the tactics for this season then, we're going to play the same way again. I think this is going to be, will be our last season of consolidating and then we'll probably look at something a bit more like that. That's the way we'll go. We'll bring the shadow striker or the attacker midfielder behind the two up front. We're definitely going to play the two up front anyway. But for this season, we're going to play the 4-1-3-2. So with Drommel in goal, Osterwald, Gimba, Pleguizelo and Dorfler at the back. Krastev in that hole row with Lucky, Jagiello and Menig out wide. And then Karikabaru and Daniello Pereira up front. So looking at the season preview then, we're in a much better place this time around as I expect a top six finish. 50-1, to 1. I'll take that. I've got no players in the Media Dream 11, but that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, a definite jump up the table as far as the media prediction goes anyway. And when we look at the schedule, we start off with games against Groningen, Ajax, Zwolle, Feyenoord and Go Ahead. We also have our qualification games for the Europa League too as well. So for me then, we're going to skip forward again to the end of Season 3. It'll be interesting to see how we got in Europe especially, but can we break into the top two for this season? Right then guys, so the end of Season 3 and we finished in third place against 71 points on the board this season. 34 games played, 23 wins, 2 draws, 9 losses, a fair few losses in there again. 65 goals scored, 43 conceded, that is high, plus 22 goal difference, and 71 points on the board, we're one point behind PSV, and the gap between us and Ajax this season is down to 8 points. We were well clear of Ezra Dalkamar in 4th place as well. How does that compare to the season before? Well, we were 5 points better off than we were last season. So past position wise, you know, it's a steady climb up the table again. We didn't have a great start to the season and that seems to be the theme. Back end of the season, we seem to be fantastic. You know, we're there again, just sat in third place from match day 23. But it's this start to the season, it's an absolute shocker. So first game of the season, we lost 2-1. Then we lost 3-0 to Ajax. Then 1-0 to Pex Wall. My days. Then we lost to Feyenoord. So within the first four games, we hadn't got any points on the board whatsoever. So we were down in 16th place by that point. As we can see there, we need to work on this start of the season. Competitions-wise then, like I say, third in the league. We were knocked out in the semi-final of the Europa Conference by Southampton. Who won that? So Southampton won 2-1 in extra time against Eintracht Frankfurt. Fair enough. So we were knocked out by the champions in the semi-final. That's a good run, I'd say. And we were knocked out in the second round of the Dutch Cup by Heron Veen. 
So there you go. So the winner of the Dutch Cup as well gets the full Europa League place, which is why we keep getting dropped into the Europa Conference. You know, it's not great for finances. It's good to be in Europe. But I think Champions League in these next couple of seasons is going to be a push now unless we win the league this coming season. Finances wise then, we've got £26 million in the overall balance, £7 million in the transfer budget, we've got 185 k in the wage budget, we're only spending 126 Dynamics wise then, from the season we've just had, team cohesion is very good, club atmosphere is very good and managerial support is very good. We've got plenty of players that want to start more games and are asking to leave and now that the club's reputation is starting to improve, we've got a couple of players that want new deals as well. Top influencers wise and I've got 22 players to support us and only two players that don't have any real opinion of us. That is massive. And then finally looking at the player stats, John Karikaburu is our top goal scorer with 24 goals this season. I told you this guy was going to be a king. He really is honestly absolutely incredible. So 21 year old, now valued at £4 million and we spent 170 k on him. Not bad going at all. 14 goals in the league as well. Highest average rate and then was Usterwald with a 7.29. Most assists was Lakui with 11. Best pass completion was Holman with 94%. Most player of the match reward was Menning and Pereira with 5 apiece. Team stats wise then we got 65 goals which was the 6th best. We conceded 43. That's worse than last season which was the 6th best. Yellow card 61 which is the 6th worst. And one red card which is the 3rd worst. So there we go then guys. We've established that our start to the season is pouring and has been for the last couple of seasons. If we could have got more points at the start you know we could have maybe challenged Dykes for the title this season and then the rebuild would have been completed three seasons in however we finished in third place we've got to push on again next season the aim has got to be challenged Ajax it has yes we shouldn't get carried away and try and get from third to first but we have closed the gap now don't get me wrong Ajax didn't have a great season when we just look at it again you know they lost six games this season and that may never happen again we've got to give it a go haven't we let's be honest so what we're going to do now is we're going to move forward throughout the summer transfer window and we'll come back at the start of season four Right then guys, season four now, it's squeaky bum time isn't it, I'm getting into the last two seasons and I'm no closer to winning this league title. Yes, we finished in second place last few seasons and we've definitely reduced the gap in the last season but yeah, it's going to be a big one this time round. So before we talk about the business that we've done, let's just have a look at the finances. So we've now got £32 million in the overall balance, £6.8 million transfer budget with a 75% of transfer revenue being given to myself. We've got 185 k wage budget and we're spending 160 I was 50-50 whether to just go all out, invest, but for the players that are out there, I don't really want to spend the money. I don't really want to spend £6-7 million pound on a player that's not massively going to improve the squad. So I have spent a little bit of money, but I haven't broke the bank to get them. So transfers wise, going out then is Aladu Seudu. Now we bought him in the first season, we got him on a free transfer and we've sold him for 875k to Vafsi. That's for me, last season he played 14 games. He was a starter in his first season, 28 games, but the money was there and we took it. And Admiral Musque has gone to Oxford, so he's gone to England. After coming over to us on a free transfer, he played 35 games, then 21, and then he really got phased out and he had seven starts last season. 245k, 350 with add-ons, yeah, just to get him off the books really. So coming in then, we've brought some youngsters in, so like Halter, Makahaley, I don't know why I do this to myself with these pronunciations, bring players in that I can't pronounce the name for, but he's 19 year old, South African, 14 caps already, current ability 4 star, potential ability 5 star, currently valued 4.6 million, and for me, I don't like news in the regens, new gens, you know, I should try and build the club up with players that exist, but I wanted to get some youth players in, you know, next season, in my last season, this goalkeeper here, he may be gone for 10 million pound and that may generate us a bit of income, so yeah, Makahaley has made it into the squad. Next in then is Usamain Diakite. He joined us on a free transfer. Current ability three and a half star, potential ability four star. 24 year old Mali. Now he's not fully capped yet. He's valued 7 million and we're spending 12k on him. That's a lot of money. I would imagine he's now one of the highest played players at the club. And we got him on a free transfer from Red Bull Salzburg. He played seven games last season and one goal. A 6.82 rating. And he can play in that defensive midfield role, which we've now moved in fairness. But he can also play central midfield. We also brought in Aaron Leia Ieska, so he's joined us on a free transfer from Zult Wagem in Belgium. So 36 games, 11 goals last season, 7.19 rating. So 
he's got goals in him and a free transfer. He had a decent bit of depth. He's a fringe player in his prime years, valued at six million. We're paying him just under eleven k a week. I'm quite happy with it. You know, he takes a number nine shirt. He's not going to be a regular starter. However, you know, he's a decent deep line forward. So that's maybe the position it'll play in. Then we brought in Enric. I can't even pronounce his surname, so we're just going to call him Enric. 22-year-old, Slovenian, eight caps, three goals, six foot two, can play behind the striker. Like I said, when I show you the tactics in a minute, we're going to play with that attacker midfielder now. Current ability, two and a half star. Potential ability, three and a half star. Currently valued at 3.1 million, and we've paid 2.1 million for him. It was at Sershal Bruges last season, 14 starts, four goals, 7.07 rating, and then he was in Monaco's second set up the season before. He has played games for Monaco, though. He played four times in the 23 24 season, and I like him. First touch 16, long shots 15. That's where we want him. We want him trying to pull the trigger from outside the area. So looking at the squad dynamics then, team cohesion is very good, club atmosphere is very good and managerial support is very good. I've got players that want to start more games and Benedict Gimba says he's playing in a weaker role. Nah, not having that, he's playing centre defence and that's it. When we look at the squad hierarchy then I've got 11 players to support us, 13 players that have no real opinion of us but nobody opposes us. And tactically, we're now going to go to the 4 3 one two. So the defensive anchor man has now become an attacker midfielder and Ost... I would assume that's how you pronounce his name, is playing behind the two strikers. So this is probably how we're going to set up with Drommel in goal. And Drommel gets a shout out. He's now fully capped, getting two caps for Holland. And I did say when the rebuild first started, I was surprised that he hadn't been fully capped already. But we've got him there and he's now valued at 3.7 million. So in front of Drommel then, we're going to play Ostevold, Grimba, Krastev and Ali Mohamed at the back. With Lockley, Jagiello and Dorfler out on that right hand side. Osk is going to play behind Daniel Pereira. And Karikaburu up front. What a team we've assembled. And with that squad we've assembled, we're expected to finish in 6th place, 33-1. to 1. But we have got a player in the Media Dream 11, and it's that guy that I brought in. Mokahele. What a player. So he is apparently the best goalkeeper in the league. I'll take that. I wonder if he'll play a game this season. Well, he's going to, isn't he? If he's the highlighted star player then chances are he's going to be a starter for us. So what we're going to do now then, guys, we're going to simulate forward into this fourth season. Hopefully, we'll have some self-worth at the end of it. We certainly need to now be pushing Ajax for that top spot. Because if we don't do it this season, we've only got one more season to go. So we're going to give it a go this time. Hopefully, we'll have something to celebrate at the end of Season 4. So the end of Season 4 then, guys. And we're now second in the league. We're five points behind Ajax. You know, I am starting to doubt if we're going to have enough to catch them, if I'm completely honest. But we finished in second place, like I say, five points behind. And we lost two of our last five games, in fairness. Ajax lost the last game of the season as well. Played 34 games, won 23, drew 7, lost 4. Scored 76 goals, that's decent. Conceded 44, though. Goal difference was 32. That goal difference. Those goals conceded are a problem, with 76 points on the board for us anyway. Looking at our past positions, then, you know, we've had a much better start to the season. Went from 18th up to 5th, and then by game day, 23, then we were we were sat in second for the rest of it. So, second place now, we're into the top two. I'm sure that means that we're getting Champions League football next season. It does. So, Champions League football, absolutely massive for us. Looking at the competitions-wise, then, we've actually won two bits of silverware. As we won the Europa Conference League and we won the Dutch Cup as well. Who did we win against? So we beat 2-1 in extra time against Marseille. Let's have a look. As we actually went behind through Ronniger on 21, Karikaburu had a goal disallowed on 40, then scored on 84, and Dorfler with a goal on 113 minutes. And then in the Dutch Cup, we won 2-0 against Sparta Rotterdam. So this is worth looking at as well. 10 shots, 5 on target for us. Lakui with a goal on 7 and Karakaburu there again with a goal on 21. This guy's incredible. Now, he doesn't look it attributes wise, but he's scoring some goals season after season for us. Looking at the finances then, we've got £12 million in the transfer budget. We've now got a wage budget of 386 k and we're spending 186 so we're 200 k under what they're letting us spend. And we've got £38 million in the overall balance. Squad dynamics wise then, team cohesion is very good, club atmosphere is excellent and managerial support is excellent as well. We've got plenty of players that want new contracts, want better playing time. Again, that's something we'll look at in the summer. And we've got no players that oppose us, 20 players that support us and 4 players that have no real opinion of us. So absolutely massive that we've won 2 Cups this season. I will take that, just a league to go. 
But looking at the player stats then, we've got two top goal scorers. Pereira and Kari Kaburu have got 29 goals each. So that's 58 goals between both my front men. Absolutely incredible. High Stavid Drayton was Gimba with a 7.27. Most assists, we've got two players. Pereira and Osterwald with 15 apiece. Best pass completion was Krastev on a 96%. Most player of the match awards, I've got two players on that. Seven each for Kari Kaburu and Krastev. Most shallow cards, 22 Krastev. And he got one red card as well. Team stats then, we scored 76 goals, which was the second best. We conceded 44 though, which is the seventh best. Yellow cards, 82, which was the worst in the entire league. And we got one red card, which was the sixth worst. So, a decent season. We've now climbed up into second place. We finally broke into the top two. Two bits of silverware though is absolutely massive at this stage. So, we're going to move on then into our last season with one more season to try and dethrone Ajax. So season five then guys, the final season. We start actually with a game against Ajax in the Dutch Super Cup. So a massive game coming up, our first chance of silverware this season against the mighty Ajax. But we'll just have a look at finances before we start the season as we've got £60 million in the transfer budget. We're now getting 100% of the available transfer revenue. 386 k as we're spending 245 k And then we've got £47 million in the overall balance. Transfers wise then, Joel Drommel has gone to Spa. Now he wasn't happy with his performance last season. He only played four times, conceded six goals. Now we brought in that young South African wonder kid goalkeeper and he's obviously displaced Drommel. So yeah, Drommel, even though we got him capped two times for Holland, that's a good achievement. We moved him on to Spa. Aaron Leia Iseka has also gone, so we had him last season. He was there basically just to fill a gap to be a squad player, and we sold him off for 1.8 million. Al Mohamed has also gone, he's gone off to Mets, so he went for 1.7 million pound after playing two games for his last season. So the ins that we've brought in Lamar Samazadik, so he has joined us from Salzburg, I think, no, Leipzig, so he joined us from Red Bull Leipzig, he's been on a free transfer, he's not played a game in a couple of seasons, but for me, we brought him in as a bit of cover. The next player in was Jordan Turangira. I, honestly, I don't know why I keep taking these players on with these names that I can't pronounce. But he has joined us in the centre of defence. Three star current ability, potential ability, three and a half star. 27 year old, German under 21 international, that's where he was at. We bought it for 2.6 million from Stuttgart. He played six games last season and he is just another cover option. And then finally, we spent a bit of money on somebody that may be past his best. So, Mehdi Tarimi, 33-year-old Iranian, 95 caps, 45 goals. 3.8 million, not a bad deal as far as I'm concerned. He only played one game last season, didn't score for Porto. But the seasons before that, you know, he's a proven goal scorer here. And he was doing it in a competitive league in Portugal. So, yeah, we've brought in Medri Tarimi. It'd be interesting to see how he gets on. Current ability, three and a half star. Potential ability, three and a half star. Fired at £7 million. But they reckon he's an important player that may be past his best. However, he's an experienced striker. So, hopefully, he's got a bit about him. Dynamics-wise, then, team cohesion is very good. Club atmosphere is very good. And my geo support is very good. So we're in a very good place. So we've only got one player that wants to leave and that's Queensy Menning, but he's not going anywhere. And then I've got nine players of supporters, 12 players that are pausers. Daniel Pereira has dropped down into the highly influential players. Lakiki moves up into the team leader slot. Tactics-wise then, it's likely that we'll line up like this this season with Mokhele in goal, Gimba, Turangiria, Krastev and Plesiguelo, honestly, at the back. Luiki, Diakite and Dorfler across the middle with Samaz Dick behind Daniel Pereiro and Tarimi up front. Karikaburu, I'm sure, will feature as well. And then for the season preview, a sixth place finish, apparently. How are we not a title favourite? I just don't know what more I can do. And we've got nobody in the Major Dream 11. So this is it then, guys, competitions-wise. We've got the Eredivisie, the Champions League, the Dutch Cup and the Dutch Super Cup. We're entered in four competitions this season. The main one's the league. This is our last season. We start off with the Dutch Super Cup final. But yeah, the Eredivisie is the big one this season. So, fingers crossed, touch wood, all that stuff, that we have won the title by the end of it. So this is it then guys, final season and we've won the league, jeez, I thought this was going to be always the bridesmaid and never the bride on this one as we've cut it close, we've ended up winning the league by one point, let's just have a quick look at it, so we played 34 games, we won 25, we drew 6, we lost 3, we had a god 61 goals, conceded 27, goal difference of plus 34, and we had 81 points on the board, Ajax have blown it towards the back end of the season, it looks like a... Uh, drawing two of their last five games. We did lose the last game of the season, though. We lost 2-0 to Groningen, so we almost blew this. You know, last season as well, 
We were close the last couple of seasons, in fairness, and I wouldn't have been happy if we hadn't won the title this season. Let's just have a look at how long we were in top place for. So it was only towards the back of the season. We were up in first place on game day five and six, and then it's taken us up until match day 32, and that'll have been when Ajax were drawing their game. So when we look at Ajax, yeah, they've been sat top of the table for the majority of the league campaign, and then they've blown it. Those two draws basically lost to me. Even though we lost our final game of the season and they won 4-2 against Venlo, it was too late at that point. So that is, that's unbelievable. Finances-wise then, we're definitely going to leave this club in a very strong position with £52 million in the overall balance, £18 million in the transfer budget. We would now have been getting 100% of the transfer revenue and our wage budget is over half a million pound now. We're only spending 289 k so we're in a very good position. Obviously, we'd be in Champions. We've got Champions League revenue again next season as well. So we've left this club, like I say, in a very strong position. Competitions-wise, we know we won the league. In the Champions League, we were knocked out in the group stage, but we still had nine points on the board. Obviously, that's a typical group with Bayern Munich, Inter Milan, and Dynamo Kiev in there. But Dynamo Kiev finished with a goal difference of minus 23. They were absolutely battered. Obviously, our third-place finish put us into the Europa League, where we were knocked out by Monaco in the first knockout round. In the Dutch Cup, we lost in the second round against PSV, and we lost in that final to Ajax in the Dutch Super Cup. So, in fairness, we had plenty of opportunity to win other silverware, and we didn't take it, which is really poor. So how are the dynamics for the squad then? Team Cohesion is very good. Club atmosphere is average. I've got a lot of players that want better deals and want to move on for a new challenge. And my geo support is very good. Top influencers wise then, I've got 16 players to support us. Six players that have no real opinion of us. Nobody opposes us, so that's not bad neither. And then looking at the player stats, Pereira was our top goal scorer with 23 goals. Season after season, this guy. High standard rating was Krastev with a 7.26. Most assists was Henrik with 9 assists. Krastev with 95% had the best pass completion and most player of the match awards goes to Osterwald with 6. Team stats wise then we scored 61 goals which is the third best but we conceded 27 goals this season. I think it was 44 the season before so massive improvement there and that's probably what's won us the league and we were the best in the league for that as well. 84 yellow cards which is the worst you know that's the second season I think we were worst for yellow cards and one red card which was the third worst. So there we go, guys. Let's just have a look at my milestones before we leave. So I was taken on in 2021 as the manager. It took us up until 2025 to win any silverware. But we were in the Europa Conference League and the Dutch Cup. And then this season, our final season, absolute scenes as we win the Eredivisie. Now, massive. So for me, I'd say this is a success. It wouldn't have made any difference if we hadn't won any other silverware. And it was all about being champions of the Eredivisie, which we've done. So there we go then, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Like I say, a little bit of a different one this time. We were never going to dominate in Europe. We were never going to win the Champions League. It was all about just replicating FC20's dramatic championship win in 2010, and we've managed to do it. So there we go. If you have enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It would mean a lot. But thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in another rebuild soon. So stay safe. It's been emotional, and I'll catch you later. ta -ra.